Welcome, I am so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Meriden Zerner, I'm a dietitian with the Cooper Clinic. And today we get to spend some time talking about one of my favorite subjects. I'm passionate about lifestyle and wellness choices that can not only care for you now, but also care for your future self. So today I'd like to present Lifestyle and Healthy Eating 2021 with an emphasis on you and some of the healthy changes and, you know, some foods, some herbs, some spices, some activities, maybe some of the things that you even see here behind me that we'll go over together. And just to, to think about how can you maximize these things? How can you add them in? How can you stave off some of what we thought was just kind of the inevitable consequences of aging? So the Cooper Clinic is a well-renowned um, preventive medicine facility in Dallas, Texas. And we're, our mission really is to help people make these choices to get that greater quantity and quality of life. And I want that for you, I want that for me, I want that for everybody I come into contact with because ultimately energizing your body, caring for your body, allows you to do more good works in the world. So today we'll talk about the Cooper philosophy for maximizing your health. We'll talk about two really motivating goals, at least in my head anyway, promoting health and slowing the aging process. We'll uh, identify and then choose some anti-inflammatory foods that you can incorporate more often. And in addition, we'll talk about the essential nutrients, the essential vitamins, perhaps some supplements that we might want to think about as we get older. And we'll talk about managing sleep and stress because we really can't talk about the whole you the whole mind-body you, and not embrace these other concepts like sleep and stress management. So Dr. Kenneth Cooper, who founded the Cooper Clinic um, way back in the, in the early 70s, would say to you, it's easier and more cost-effective to maintain good health than to regain it once it's been lost. So it's really a, an opportunity to think about, okay, what is going well? Let's check in on your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your bone density, your mobility, your cognitive sharpness, and maintain those elements. And that could be through some intentional food choices or activities. And then if there are some things that we wanna to continue to work on or pull back on, I hope that you'll find some ideas in uh, today's presentation that makes sense for you. We talk a lot on the Cooper campus about squaring off the curve. And so the visual that you see before you, you think about, hey, a high risk lifestyle. Where as we age, you know, we could have gotten away with a lot when we were in our 20s, right? And then maybe we gain 10 pounds and then things slow down a little bit and then maybe cholesterol goes up and then we gain a little bit more and then just dead there at the end. And I will blow the ending because it does all end there, right? But we're trying to avoid this period of deficient survival that you see in that sort of red shaded area. We're living longer. And so if we're going to live longer, I want you to be the most vibrant, active person that you can possibly be. So if we manage your health with some small sustainable changes, aware of your cholesterol, making daily choices where we can help better manage your blood glucose, that you're able to go long, grow, go strong, have all the energy and physical capabilities that you want to play with your grandkids or whatever you choose to do, and then we'll be done. So that is my goal for us today, to square off the curve as we age, which apparently we're all doing on a daily basis, we wanna think about the immune system, we wanna think about inflammation, and in fact, they've coined a new term, relatively new term, called inflammaging. And how as we age, we see um, inflammation manifest in lots of different places in our body. And yes, maybe it's the artery, maybe uh, you know, arthritis is inflammation in the joint, inflammation in our brain cells, that would be sort of a cognitive component like in Alzheimer's. So when we buffer inflammation, we think about an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, it's going to benefit the entire body, every cell in your body. Now inflammation in and of itself, pretty normal right? You get a cut, it gets red, it gets irritated, it drives a response and we get faster healing. So I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about that low grade chronic inflammation that ultimately contributes to poor health and it can manifest in lots of different ways. We actually see it in your blood work. So this is my first loving nudge to have you check in with your practitioner, check in with your physician on a very regular basis. I'm sure you are, but I certainly know in the past couple of years it might've been harder to get those appointments in. 
but let's know what's going on because we can unravel a lot with your thyroid, with, with uh, glucose issues, um, but we really want to know what the landscape is. What are your unique numbers so we know what we're working with? Ultimately, one of the blood levels that I'd be checking when I got your panel would be the CRP, the C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation in your blood. So we can test for that so we know what's going on. You'll see too and probably really already appreciate the power of inflammation and how over time it contributes to diabetes, to cancer, to cardiovascular, heart challenges, um, gut issues, autoimmune diseases. We're seeing more and more of those on the rise. In terms of pushing back against all of these with a few choice lifestyle changes or additions or subtractions, you're going to see again this quantity and quality of life. I mentioned subtractions. I would love for you to minimize or back burner, if you will, a few of these fire starters. These are inflammation drivers. So when we're doing a little less saturated fat, trans fat, certainly refined carbohydrates and added or in excess sugars, we're going to be able to lower our inflammation. We really find that there's more impact, and I personally think it's more motivating to focus on what could we add in? What could we add in? And it's going to be the firefighters. Now, the firefighters, I want you to increase these. And it's even some of the brightly colored things that I have on my table back here. So can we do more with the fruits and vegetables? We've only got 10% of the population who eat enough of these brightly colored fruits and vegetables, which are really protectors of your cells. They prevent free radical damage. You name it, they are going to contribute to positive overall health. We want to think about the herbs and spices. We want to think about the healthy fats, the olive oils, the nuts and the seeds, the omega-3s. And so, hey, if you're not a fan of fatty fish, the salmons, the mackerels, the halibuts, um, the tunas. Your friendly dietitian here, I've got that. We're going to figure out a way perhaps to supplement that so that you are getting these benefits. Now, what you see in this whole page of firefighters is absolutely captured in a beautiful visual, I think, and it's the traditional Mediterranean pyramid. This could be a really fun structure, some scaffolding that you could utilize in your own lives in terms of, hey, how do I build this diet? Where can I mark some boxes? And you'll see that there's daily physical activity, certainly. We'll talk a little bit more about that because it's a player. And you've got some of the quality carbohydrates. Now, if somebody had a weight loss goal, I'm going to tailor this pyramid for your goal. So we may be cutting down on portions. We always want to be uh, portion savvy. But we're going to spend a lot more time focusing on how do we increase those brightly colored layers, the beans, the legumes, the, uh, uh, the avocados, the berries, and a daily serving perhaps, just a small one, cute little one ouncer of nuts, where you can really tap all the health benefits that you see here. Have confidence. Look at this particular structure, and it looks very similar to Andrew Weil's anti-inflammatory pyramid. So there's a lot of commonality here. There's a lot of confidence that you can have. And I know nutrition can, can, can get really confusing. There's a lot of myth and misunderstanding out there. So I want you to have confidence not only in the source of the information, but there, there are some common themes here that you can feel good about. The anti-inflammatory pyramid looks a heck of a lot like the Michigan Healing Foods Pyramid. So once again, we've got all of these opportunities that we know serve today's body, which is very different than even 20 years ago's uh, body and certainly different than hundreds of years ago, right? So we want to address that, yeah, we're sitting a lot more and the quality of our food sources may be a little bit different. The quality of our water may be different. Keep in mind that that Mediterranean-style diet or what you're seeing here is what you'll find in all of the blue zones around the globe. Now, if you don't know much about the blue zones, this is going to be your really fun research uh, for later on because these are the areas around the globe where they live the longest with the least incidence of disease. These areas have the greatest percentage of centenarians. What are they doing? How are they living so long and they're mobile and they're sharp? Well, there's a lot of really fabulous um, habits and lifestyle choices that they make. And it's not even just about the exercise or the food, which of course would be my favorite part. They have a strong sense of purpose. They share a strong sense of faith. They socialize. Strong sense of family and family values. 
So yes, they move and they eat well, but they're taking care of themselves in lots of different ways. And so feel good about the community that you're creating and continue to participate in because that is what the human experience is all about. There's health to be had in the way we just engage as human beings. So the blue zones could be a really fun uh, search for you for later on, longevity hotspots, and I hope we'll be among them uh, here for the next uh, you know, decade or so. The Mediterranean diet also was ranked number one again this year in the US News and World Report rankings. 2021, 40 some odd experts around the country get together and they weigh in, no pun intended, wait, Dietitians, funny, anyway. Uh, they weigh in on all these diets, and of course we wanna look at the best overall, because we always wanna be looking at multiple lenses for health. We don't wanna look only at like a weight loss plan, because we wanna make sure it doesn't compromise your risk for cancer. We wanna make sure that it's caring for your brain health. So the Mediterranean diet, again, number one. Now the second uh, uh, well-ranked diet that you see there is the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. One of the most well-studied diets for decades now that was very helpful for lowering blood pressure. So let's take these two top, let's fuse them together. Look at number five, and there was a tie here, but number five, look at the MIND diet. This is going to be very helpful for aging. It is the Mediterranean and DASH Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. So they looked at this diet and these elements of a diet that actually lowered Alzheimer's disease risk. And if people followed this diet pretty rigorously to the letter, we've got a 53 reduction in the risk. 53% rather reduction in the risk. I think that's powerful and that was with diet alone. Now, if you were like living in the real world and you were just doing the best you can and you were able to follow it pretty well, lowered the risk by 35% even with moderate adherence. What I like about this is if you're a structure person and I am too, um, you've got some things where you can, again, mark the box. It's going to say, hey, can you have, you know, healthy nuts or seeds, you know, five times a week? Um, can you have, you know, berries three to five times a week? So it's going to give you some really concrete tools to go back through to manage not only healthy mind, but healthy body. They also utilized the Mediterranean diet, and it says diet for happiness there. They studied mood, and certainly mood, and it, I, I hope it can become a greater point of conversation, but depression for all human beings, mental health illness for all human beings is so critically important. And as we age, um, I feel like the chance for people to feel more and more isolated, more and more frustrated, perhaps more and more depressed, we want to have those open conversations and also know that there are resources. So this is not gonna take the place of a therapist. This is certainly not gonna take the place of like a medication if needed. But oh my goodness, when people did more with their healthy diet, we saw a reduction in depression symptoms, that last bullet there, by 32%. That's interesting. Because there's no side effects to be had here other than greater energy and longevity, right? So maybe exploring this, if this is relevant for you and your situation, it might very well be this is relevant for a family member and you can just file that away and help them out down the line. So the Mediterranean diet, what does it look like? What could you incorporate? How do we get there? It's very simply more, more color. Eat the rainbow, right? So boosting fruits and vegetables, switching to some of the healthier oils. Um, it could be more seafood, more beans and legumes for sure. Um, the whole grains are going to be in there. Just a handful of nuts and seeds. And then one of my personal favorites, add more spices. So adding more flavor. We tend to eat less with greater flavor satisfaction. And courtesy of the American Institute of Cancer Research, look at all the benefits on the right hand of your screen. So when we think about black pepper, cumin, curcumin, cinnamon, ginger, garlic, red chili, you're getting all of these potential health benefits and you just simply added it in. So maybe on the Lazy Susan next to the pepper and maybe some, uh, some sea salt, you can throw in a few more of these seasonings consistently and get these additional health benefits. This is the idea of food as medicine, and it's something that I'm absolutely passionate about, near and dear to my heart, always interested for any age. What can we do here? Well, could you add more ginger? 
And maybe it's not just eating that little thing that's on the side of the sushi that looks like a decoration, but it could be ginger tea, a ginger chew. We could cook with more ginger and get this amazing decrease in inflammation studied to help with muscle pain. What about including a little bit more uh, turmeric? So the active ingredient curcumin in turmeric has anti-inflammatory properties. So if you arrived in my office and said, yeah, I'm really struggling with arthritis, I'm going to say, okay, well, what about 400 milligrams of turmeric twice a day as one of the many tools that could help you? You could just cook with it. It's really good on roasted cauliflower. It's not bad in a tuna salad. So these could be opportunities just to explore different flavors and get some health benefits. This is probably my favorite titled slide. I felt so proud of this one, Sage Advice. Wise advice, but sage, the, the uh, herb sage, actually helps improve brain function. And especially in people with Alzheimer's disease. So maybe you have a family history, you want to be more mindful. What else can you do with sage? And whether it's recipes or, you know, there may be some really cool ways to stick some sage or some greenery in, a, in the blender when you're making a smoothie. But we're going to see some improvement in memory function for healthy people and older folks. So when we think about nutrients of concern, or really a better way to say it, nutrients of opportunity, and I know the font is small, this would just be your personal opportunity to kind of walk through these elements and make sure that you're taking good care of yourself. We see a lot of issues with hydration um, in older adults, not getting in enough calories, energy, um, fiber, only 90, excuse me, 90% 90 of the US population doesn't get enough fiber. Like fiber needs a better PR person, but we're just not getting it done. Um, so increasing your fiber is going to be incredibly helpful. Protein. There's something called sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss. So we want to make sure there's enough calories, that there's enough activity, but there's enough protein throughout your day, and it's got to be well divided because you can only use so much at any one time. So most people need a little protein about three times a day to do all the muscle healing, the repair work, which is mind and body once again, so that you are able to take that walk, to go meet your friends uh, for supper, whatever that might look like in your life. So concerns for aging, but again, really opportunities just to walk through and say, yeah, I think I've got that covered, and maybe I need some support with that. Maybe you go check in with your doctor, your dietitian, and we'll help you strategize. When we think about other concerns specifically, eye health, vision, that can be a big one. Well, we've got an answer for that. Lutein and zeaxanthin. So these are two phytonutrients that you get in green foods. So is this a week where in your grocery cart you could put in more spinach, more kale, um, more asparagus, more broccoli, but in the deep dark greens, we get all of those eye health benefits. And so perhaps even on a daily basis, could you challenge yourself to get in some leafy greens? We think about the, the joint issues, the inflammation, the arthritis, wherever that manifests. Certainly we know that there's lots of smart supplementation um, there. Movement, believe it or not, is going to be one of the bigger tools. And as I mentioned, perhaps some turmeric for the joint. We want to think about those healthy fats for the joint, and we can get those through foods. I'll often B12 is an area of concern for some of my um, 50 plus, which I am among that category at this point in my life. So we want to look at what foods can you get um, B12 in, but often that is one that may need to be supplemented. However, I always want you to check in with your physician or your dietitian, your healthcare provider before you add in supplements because sometimes they interact with medications and that's a big deal. And we really want to get you a good quality supplement. So, um, choosing supplement lines that have been really well vetted because your health is worth it, your life is worth it, let's get you a good one. Movement. It's actually prescribed in the European Union. Prescribed because it's going to be that much more powerful. We want to keep you mobile and active. You look at all the benefits here without a doubt. And so to think that um, we wouldn't have this be an inclusion, would be remiss just based on human beings and how they do well. You can get a better night of sleep with more movement. We just have to keep you moving. And we can be creative about how you get that done. And if it's just the walk around the block, if it's water exercise, water fitness, I teach that. That's a phenomenal one. Um, but there are lots of, there's arm bicycles. There's lots of great ways to keep moving. And we can just kind of work that out creatively together. 
The bottom line is just not sitting as much as we do. So I always provide the research um, from where from where these uh, sources, rather the sources where you're getting this information from. But limiting the time, the amount of time that we're sitting absolutely improves heart health, reduces insulin resistance, and likely lowers cancer risk. So it's really about just stand up. Just stand up more as best as you can, um, or just be mindful of how much that we're sitting, which is in the car, it's in front of the computer, it's in front of the TV. So how can we weave in just a little bit more movement in your day? It just makes me want to walk across the stage right now to keep myself moving. Sleep would be the last piece of the puzzle. And um, really appreciating what goes on when we sleep and that the majority of us don't get enough. And certainly as we age, there can be issues with, you know, wakefulness, um, worry, waking up to use the restroom multiple times. So we're going to see what we can do, maybe front load fluids, to get that deeper night of sleep. Less than seven hours is considered chronic sleep deprivation. So I want to be very careful that even as we age, our sleep needs, and especially the depth of sleep, that doesn't really change. So if you look at my fun little chart courtesy of the Sleep Foundation, you can find your age and just kind of walk up to the dark blue sweet spot. And for most people, it's about seven to nine hours. At least it's not less than seven. Um, once you're 64 and up, it's seven to eight hours. And so it's not even the length of time, it's the depth of sleep. So I want to be very careful. All of your memory consolidation takes place in stage three sleep. All of your muscle repair takes place in stage three sleep. So how can we help you get a better night of sleep? Lots of cool strategies, colder bedroom, um, getting the exercise to physically fatigue your body. It could be white noise in the bedroom. It could be um, just kind of a mindful relaxation right before bed. We can find that through stretching. We can find that through meditation. We can find that through prayer. You've got all of these opportunities that help you bring it down a notch to get that better night of sleep. I might give you some extra magnesium at night, which is great for muscle cramping and lowering blood pressure, but can give you a relaxation response. I might suggest something like tart cherry. It's just a food. We can do it in powder form. We can do it in concentrate form or juice form, but it helps the body's melatonin levels, which can help you get a better night of sleep. So maybe a little bit of tart cherry uh, at night could be a food as medicine inclusion to really help you embrace that third piece of the puzzle, which is the sleep and stress. So six more reasons to get uh, more sleep. Certainly learning and memory safety, mood, heart health, disease, and metabolism and weight. The more we are sleep challenged, the more the body kicks over into a fight or flight response, the more it says, ooh, we should hang on to some body fat and wait for the storm to pass. So in terms of you being long, leaner, stronger, longer, we want to make sure that you're sleeping well. Now, this is me. Um, if you have any questions or if you're just curious about some of what I shared today, do know that the Cooper Clinic is available to help or guide or um, if you just want to call, text, or email. If you have other questions that, that are uh, specific and relevant for you, I'd be so happy to uh, entertain those. Privileged, actually, so don't hesitate to reach out. With that, I thought it could be fun today to put some of these concepts into action, that we could actually make an anti-aging, if you will, smoothie together, okay? So a smoothie could be one of the most delicious ways to get in, you know, at least five, maybe even 10 of these fabulous foods, these foods that are rich in the phytonutrients, the dark reds, the greens, the oranges, um, and kind of just a fun breakfast or maybe a fun snack for people. So I've got a pineapple green smoothie for you today. It's courtesy of eating well, but I think we should just rename it and call it the anti-aging smoothie, okay? So we'll start with a liquid base. And I've chosen um, a low sugar, no sugar almond milk, but you could do whatever you like. If you have regular milk at home, soy milk, whatever, oat milk is sort of a new choice. And it's about half a cup. I'm gonna pour in just a little bit more than that today. What I like about starting with this kind of a base is you're gonna get some solid calcium and vitamin D. And again, calcium, like protein, like vitamin C, you need to divide throughout your day probably about three opportunities to maximize calcium for bones. 
So I've started with some almond milk, and next we'll add in some Greek yogurt. What do I get here? Phenomenal protein. It adds a nice creamy, thicker texture to a smoothie. I get amazing probiotics, and so these are the healthy bacteria. This is about a third of a cup. And you can use plain, although I think sometimes just the vanilla is also quite lovely. It depends on what your goals might be and what your taste preferences are. So there's my Greek yogurt. Typically would give this one just a quick blend, and it'll just be one second. We'll blend again. So let me get this going. You just give it a quick blend. That's all we need to do for that. And then we add in all the fun color. So today I'm actually incorporating a cup of spinach. And yes, it's gonna turn it kind of a pretty green color, but you're not gonna taste that kind of more um, bold, perhaps bitter taste that spinach can have independently because we're gonna add all these other amazing flavors. So I'm adding some spinach. I'm adding a tablespoon of chia seed. Now you could use flax seed, you could use oat bran, um, you could use a blend of these seeds, but by doing this, I'm adding a lot of omega-3 and a lot of fiber, a lot of fullness that comes from it as well. So if you haven't played with chia seed, this could be a really fun addition. Then we add in the fruits. Now when you use frozen fruits, you get the same nutritional benefit as fresh. Um, so I've got frozen banana here, really high in potassium. We always want to balance sodium with potassium when we think about heart health, blood pressure. So I'm adding in frozen bananas. You can use fresh as well, but I kind of like that cool slushy flavor or texture that goes with it. And I'm adding in a half a cup of frozen pineapple. You could interchange any frozen vegetable that you want, but these do work well together in terms of the flavors. Pineapple has bromelain in it, which is a really um, helpful enzyme that helps with digestion, so it's a win-win. A little bit of a sweetener, completely up to you. You can use a little squeeze of a local honey. You could use maybe a, a sugar a sweetener substitute if you're needing to mind your sugars. I'm from Maine, so I like a little maple syrup, so just a splash to taste, just a little bit. Add a little bit of extra flavor, and then we put it all together, and we hit blend. All right, tasting it, the best part. I can almost just feel the nutrients in my hand here. And of course, I think everything is better with just a little pop of color. And I don't want you to take my word for it though. I think as far as um, you having confidence that this is in fact tasty. I, I, I found someone you might know, uh, Mr. Stephen Carroll. Would you come on up and try my amazing anti-aging smoothie, sir? Wow, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> That is really good. You've really got to try this. All right, so take his word for it. Here's to your health. Thank you so very much for your time. Take care of yourself. Longevity with a few simple changes.